friends and former students. It is a great honor for me to be here today. A great honor for me to speak about a cause that is very close to my heart, to speak about justice for the people of Somaliland. And because I believe I'm the oldest person in this hall, I have been asked to speak about the history of Somaliland. Because unless we have a history and we recognize our history, we will never value our present and we will never plan for the future. You must know where you've come from, where you are, and then decide where you want to go. <clears throat> Somaliland, some people think that Somaliland the word, the name, was given to us a few years ago. That we just looked at a list of names and chose to call ourselves Somaliland. Others in the Horn of Africa have done that. Some, five, some seven, eight years ago, a portion of the Somali-inhabited Horn of Africa, which is part of the former Somalia Italiana, has done that found a name, liked it, and called themselves that name. The name of Somaliland is an old one, one we like very much, and the name that we hope to hold on for as long as it takes. Uh, it was this name that the British gave us, confirmed to us when, let me just go back a little bit here in my little thing. There we are. You have the, uh, the Flemish version, I have my version. Um, this name was given to us by the British, but then our existence did not start with the British. It goes back to several thousand years years. It goes back to the times of the pharaohs. And among the precious gifts that existed at that time and that were given to kings and, 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 and royalty was a product of Somaliland. Frankincense and myrrh, foh, luban, maidi, call it whatever, grows in the Gullis range of mountains of Somaliland. And we believe it was also a product that was used for the mummification of mummies during the time of the pharaohs. Somaliland was also um, a valuable trading partner with the people who lived alongside the Red Sea. We have cave paintings today in Somaliland, the uh, Last Gale, Nagah uh, Kurre, at least these two I have visited personally, and I'm told there are others that depict ancient cave drawings that date back to over five or six or 11,000 years ago. This proves that there was a civilization living in that part of the world that had time to develop a culture and time to do some cave paintings. The University of Montpellier in France and the universities of Somaliland are today studying the history of the cave paintings. And at one time, they even tried to uh, find out what these colors were made of. These bright, brilliant colors that are thousands of years old. And what the two universities, Somaliland and Montpellier, put together and they thought would be the same as those pictures, as those colors, took two years to fade away. So we still do not know the mystery of the colors 
in those paintings that have lasted for thousands of years. We have, of course, in Somaliland, being at the mouth of the Red Sea, being a nation of traders. We traded with the East, we traded for the, with, with the Arab, Arabian Peninsula, and we also traded with our, the other, our brothers in Africa. Um, even though I don't like to mention it, it was also an important slave trade route. But that's the reality, that's the fact. We have good things, but we also have bad things that we must record and so that we do not make the same mistakes again and we learn from these historical facts. Ancient Somalis, Somalilanders, were also invaded or visited by um, historians and explorers. To this day we have who made the territory of Somaliland according to treaties that were made with the others who also wished to have part of the Horn of Africa. There was the Anglo-French Treaty, the Anglo-Italian Treaty, and the Anglo-Ethiopian Treaty that delineated, that marked the border that we have today. If I were given the choice to make the border of Somaliland today, I would take it to beyond those borders. My family, my clans, my camels, my people live a good way inside Ethiopia. But then international treaties forbid me from doing that and make me to respect the international borders of Somaliland. I can go across the border, they can come across the border to me, but the administrative border is there. So when there are peoples who think that borders are elastic and they can be widened and restricted and you can claim things and say, this clan lives there and the other clan lives there, are talking through their hat. Because <laughs> nations, nations spill across borders. And if I take this great country today that is the seat of the European Union, I wonder how many people from Belgium have traveled across this administrative border of Belgium, and how many people from neighboring countries, let's say Holland or France, have traveled into Belgium. Borders are, thank you, Borders are there to mark administrative territories. They're not emotional, they're not tribal. And if the border of Somaliland is made to move across one way or the other, it would destroy the entire map of Africa and the entire map of nations. <laughs> Somaliland is what it was in 1883. Somaliland is what it was at the time of independence on the 26th of June, 1960. And Somaliland is that same Somaliland today in 2012. We have... One of the things that I would like to do, and I hope you will see this on the map, is the stamp. A stamp, a British stamp, that calls that country on that map British Somaliland Protectorate. I love that map. Not because I love stamps and I'm a very ardent stamp collector, but it proves that that British monarch was proud to show the British territory of Somaliland. Monarchies do not claim territories they do not control. Britain would have shown a different map if that were not the map of Somaliland. 
Italy also has a treaty with Britain and has La Somalia Italiana. La Somalia Italiana was formed according to treaties that were agreed with the colonizing powers at that time. It cannot grow and it cannot shrink. The territory of La Somalia Italiana is what it was at the time of their independence, is what it was at the time of the independence of Somaliland. And that is the territory that is carved on stone, that you cannot move and that is not conducive to change. Um, British Somaliland was proudly the first born and independent Somali nation. We hold that place in history. We are the most senior of the partners in the Horn of Africa who speak Somali and who are of Somali origin. We hold seniority over 50 African countries, not only those in the Horn of Africa, but Somaliland was the third independent nation among those 53 African nations today <laughs> who have been given the authority to decide over the fate of Somaliland. Where was Kenya when I was independent in 1960? Where was Tanzania or Tanganyika at the time? Where was, Uni where was Uni Uganda? Where were the other 50 countries, the other nations who sit in the uh, Europe, African Union today and who decide, no, 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 Somalia is independent, is indivisible. You were not even there when I was Somaliland. I was born before you. Somaliland is a country that was very far looking, very forward looking. In the 50s, I am not even sure that countries in Europe were thinking about the European Union when Somalilanders and other Somalis in the Horn of Africa were thinking about the greater Somalia. <clears throat> so union is not something that is new to Somalis. It is not new to Somaliland. We conceived it and we lived it and we made it happen and we waited for the next Somali nation to become independent for us to achieve that union that we had campaigned for waited for the independence of our next neighbor, next door neighbor, Somalia, so that we could put into practice what we had been preaching. So union was not imposed upon us. Somaliland did not get conquered. Somaliland was not bought into union with Somalia. Somaliland united with Somalia or Somalia united with Somaliland because we were already there when they also became independent. Union is a good thing. We have nothing against union. We admire unions at work. We respect and admire the union that you have in Europe, that you have in the United States, that you have in other countries. But the kind of union that we had with our neighbors in Somalia, regretfully, was one that did not work. It did not work, not because Somalilanders did not want it to work, but because our neighbors, we had a partner who found it difficult to respect the union, to respect equal partnership, to respect the rights of the people of the Somali nations, both in Somalia and in Somaliland. And it was because of that injustice that some of our military officers in 1961 on the 10th of December, 1961, I know that date because I was hit on that date during the attempted coup, withdrew from that union and said, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go back and let's look into the act of union and let's see, let's make that union worthwhile, beneficial, safe for both parties. 
and regretfully, unfortunately, that, you, that attempted coup did not work. It only resulted in more punitive actions to be taken against the people of Somaliland. We've had moments of relative detente. Yes, when uh, in 1967, uh, late Abdul Rashid Ali Sharmarke was elected president and he appointed Mohammed Haji Ibrahim Igal as prime minister. Yes, there was relative detente, not only among Somalis, not only among the people of Somalia and Somaliland, but also detente among the people of the Horn of Africa. That was when that regime, that administration, was the one that had made the rapprochement with Kenya and ended years of conflict between Somalia and, Somali and, and Kenya. It was that time that was a rapprochement and a detente was also reached with Ethiopia. I lived it. I was there. That's how the people of Somaliland react. We try to reach solutions through dialogue, through negotiations, through discussions, through compromise. And it was that passive, that peace-loving attitude of the people of Somaliland that has today allowed us, the people of the new Somaliland, to be forgiving, to look forward, to offer shelter and protection to the people of neighboring Somalia. Their weak come to us, their sick come to us, their youth come to us for education. So people of Somaliland, thank goodness, are forgiving people and who like to use their energy to build, not to destroy. And if I go to that map, to the, to the picture of what Somaliland was like in 1960, uh, I beg your pardon, in 1961, our cities were leveled to the ground. A quarter of a million of our people died. Children, two and three year old children and their mothers were put into mass graves. That picture is the picture of Hargeisa, the city. That is a picture of a hospital. Now, who bombs a hospital? Who bombs a school? Who bombs a home? Who bombs mosques? Who bombs civil, civilian residential areas? Who puts the bodies of children and innocent victims into mass graves? That, those bones are the bones of the people of Somaliland, the people who conceived union with Somalia, the people who conceived and campaigned for the independence of Somalia and other Somalis. These are the bones of the children of our nation. And I don't think anybody earns the title of being a hero if they can put bodies of little children into mass graves. Defenseless little children of two years old and three years old have been put in graves. <laughs> to me, that is cowardice. That is cowardice. But in spite of that, but in spite of that, the people of Somaliland refused to kill and take vengeance over the 10,000 troops that were within Somaliland at the time of our separation from Somalia. And some may, may have thought, they've killed a quarter of a million of our people, let us kill those 10,000 and at least take revenge on them. And I'm so proud to be a Somalilander because my people said, no, they could do that, but we will not become animals who can kill 10,000 prisoners. Instead, we shared water with them, we shared food with them, we provided a safe corridor for them, and we allowed them to go home. That is what Somaliland is all about. Ladies and gentlemen, I could sing the praises of my country forever, for a long time. And what I'm trying to do is to make the international world understand that we are not gloating 
nor happy about what's happening in neighboring Somalia. Their pain hurts us. That child who is dying in Mogadishu or Bosaso or Kismayo, at the end of the day, is a Somali child. That woman who is denied health care and that youth who is denied education in former Italian Somalia, at the end of the day, is a Somali youth. When I and others have been allowed to live in your countries when we, ha when we are of a different color, why, how can we deny a young Somali student to study in our universities if they come in and satisfy the entrance examination with their pen and their knowledge, and if they respect the rules and the regulations of that learning institution, why? We welcome them, we have them, a quarter of the patients in my hospital are people who have run and escaped from Somalia. They're people, they're sick, they are brothers. What I'm trying, the message that I would like to leave with everybody today, and I hope that my presentation will be distributed to you in, in, its, in, in its entirety, is that Somaliland means well. Somaliland is a country that needs to be admired and needs to be copied. Somaliland is achieving what other nations in Africa have failed to achieve. It has exercised tolerance, it has exercised determination, it has proven that it is forgiving. It is also resilient because it manages to live with what it has. We make do with what we have. We don't live according to what we get from you, the international you. The real message I want to leave is that today in Somaliland, we have half a million young people who were born in refugee camps and who in 1991 were told, your country is now free, you have reclaimed your, the sovereignty of your country. You can now grow in a country that is yours and is being run according to what is of value for your people. Recognition will come soon. We heard that in 1993 in, in, in after the Borama conference. We heard it in 1997 during the presidential elections. We heard that from the international community in 2001 when we had our referendum. We heard it again when we had our local government elections and presidential elections and I don't know how many elections and so on and so on. Today, a half a million young people are at a risk of losing credibility when it comes to the international community. They are in a place where you have a powerful industry called terrorism, piracy, and fundamentalism that has a budget of over five billion US dollars a year. That massive destructive industry of piracy and terrorism is beckoning to our children and showing them a short road to go to heaven by blowing themselves up and blowing others. And ladies and gentlemen and the international community, if we do not harness the energy of our young people today in a positive, constructive way, some of them could be tempted to use that energy, that pent up energy that they have in a destructive way. And it will be, at a, for a, it will be a loss not only to Somalilanders and to the parents and these, of these children, but it will be a loss to the entire world. It will be a loss to democracy, it will be a loss to freedom, and it will be a loss to human rights. A half a million young people in Somaliland deserve a right to their rightful identity, right to employment, right to living in a peaceful, democratic, and stable Somaliland.
Somaliland has made its choice. First, to unite with Somalia, and then its choice to separate from Somalia. Its people have entered into a referendum, and I'm sure it will be discussed by my colleagues. The people of Somaliland have no intention of reuniting with that failed state that is Somalia. And who in their right minds, who in their right minds would want to unite with Al-Shabaab? Is that what you would like us to do? Who in their right minds would want to unite with pirates, with terrorists, with warlords? It cannot happen. It will not happen. It must not happen because that would be a loss to the international community. Somaliland can be a, a positive partner for freedom-loving people and democratic people of this world. We, can, we have shown you what we can do with very little. Which other country in the, in the world has been able to rebuild itself with its own resources and in a less than a quarter of a century has built that Somaliland today where you have just one terrorist, an old woman like me, because I can terrorize any one of you because I have the freedom to do so. I can pick up a microphone. That's what Somaliland is all about. That's what we are bringing to the world. Let us join and become friends with people who want justice and democracy. Don't push us towards those who want to destroy the free world. Don't push us towards terrorists. Don't push us towards Al-Qaeda and Al-Shabaab and all the other names. Somaliland is here to stay. And the sooner the international community comes to terms with that, the better. We can help you. You've tried. The world has tried 17 times, 18 times. You've had TFGs, FSGs, I don't know, all the Gs in this world <laughs> to try and bring peace to Somalia, and you have failed. You took the Marines there. It didn't work. You took you, every nation, 28 nations, landed on the shores of Mogadishu to try and bring peace to Somalia. Recognize your failures, because it hasn't worked. Our system works. You're spending billions of dollars of good taxpayers' money on Somalia. But do you realize that it's not going to work? Not because you have not tried, but because the people of Somalia do not want it to work. You cannot match the industry of terrorism that they have. You are being beaten by terrorists. Give Somaliland a chance. Invite Somaliland as a partner. Give the dignity and the recognition that the Som at Somali people of Somaliland deserve. And you will see what Somalilanders can do. Somalilanders stick to their word. They have a track record of 21 years. And they will be a very strong partner and ally in bringing peace and stability to that turbulent horn of Africa. And I thank you all very much. I know the chairman is looking at me. Thank you all very much. Don't make me cry. Thank you, Madam Edna, for your uh, inspiring speech. I give now no, uh, our next speaker the word to this Mr. Bruno Turbans. He's a federal member of the Parliament for the Socialists and a former Vice Minister in the federal government. Uh, before Mr. Turbans went into politics, he was Chairman of Amnesty International Belgium. Therefore, he has a lot of experience to share on the subject of human rights. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bruno Turbans. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Distinguished Speaker of uh, the House, uh, dear Mrs. Adam Ismali, 
Um, it's, it will be demonstrated that it is always very difficult to speak after an eloquent and highly respected speaker. <laughs> as, <laughs> but I, I can, of course, try um, to keep your attention and uh, to say some words. In a region rife with violence and chaos, torn by warlord, warlordism and lacking any authority on rule of law, Somaliland looks like a beacon of stability and an oasis of peace and democracy. Democracy, the rule of law, and respect for human rights are almost non-existent in other parts of Somalia, where war, banditry, corruption, hunger, illiteracy, disease, and unemployment are the norm. Somalia is a failed state, as been said, that has failed its people. In contrast, the Northwest breakaway region of the Republic of Somaliland is haven of peace, stability, and progress in the Horn of uh, Africa. Against all odds and with little international recognition or aid, and three million people of Somaliland have largely, by their own efforts, begun to establish a secure, functioning, democratic state and a fair degree of economic stability and growth. Somaliland's most important merit is that it has carried through a peace process on its own initiative and without outside help, financed at least in the beginning only with its own resources. Unlike peace conferences elsewhere in, the, in Africa, peace in Somaliland has homegrown and was brokered entirely with the initiatives and resources of its own people. One, once peace was secured, a general and voluntary demo, demobilization of the militia freedom fighters was achieved without international assistance and without foreign troops to make it happen. Once this major hurdle was overcome, the people rose to the daunting challenge of rebuilding Somaliland on a self-help basis. Reconstruction took place without political recognition or international support and with only the meager resources of the country to rely on. The relative freedom in the process of democratization has generated one interesting result, a modern central power mixed with traditional elements of authority. For 20 years already, the people of Somaliland have been waiting for international recognition of their country. The goal of independence in coalescence with the needs of the people has galvanized the pacification of the country and the creation of a well-functioning state with regular elections, an effective police and army force, and a flourishing private economic sector. All of this without much official international assistance and again mainly pulled by local, other, often uh, uh, traditional clan leaders. This is a truly remarkable achievement in the region of Africa that has long been uh, a byword for chaos, repression and war. Over the last decade and uh, a half, the nation has made the transition from an autocratic clan-based society, notorious for its poor governance, conflict and human rights abuses, to a peaceful and progressive multi-party democracy. A referendum in 2001 led to the adoption of a new constitution, it has been said. Since then, Somalilanders have held successful elections for president, the House of Representatives and local government. While Somalia has not had a free election since the, the 60s. Somaliland has held three mandates since the turn of the millennium. 
each of which has been declared free and fair by, inter by international ele election observers. In contrast to the intestinal conflicts that medieval Somalia and many other African nations, Somaliland has found a way to negotiate and resolve their rivalries peacefully. It has brought previously hostile clans together in a pluralistic system that minimizes conflict by incorporating the clan elders into uh, the advisory upper house. Somalilanders have achieved an, inv an invaluable peace, progressively disarming and demobilizing thousands of gunmen, while in Somalia, militias still run amok, looting, extorting and terrorizing the local population. Many of Somaliland's former clan fighters have also been successfully incorporated into the disciplined National Army. And unlike many of her neighbors, the armed forces stay out of politics. Moreover, Somaliland is committed to the, to the rule of law upheld by an independent judiciary. Discrimination on the grounds of ethnicity, gender or opinion is prohibited and human rights abuses, abuses such as torture are criminal offenses. The right to protest is protected by law. Somaliland's democracy and observance of human rights are, however, far from perfect, like most other countries. And lots of work remains to be done. Somaliland is, is not yet a fully-fledged democracy, and its unwavering observance of human rights is still a long way off. Somaliland has a multi-party system, but only three political parties are allowed under the constitution. Islam is the state religion, and while non-Islamic Islamic faiths are tolerated, their promotion is prohibited. M Muslims are not permitted to renounce Islam, and the legal system is based on Sharia law. And although very rarely enforced with harshness, this does nevertheless place inherent restrictions to the rights of women. The female sex is poorly represented or represented in public life and state institutions, although, you, yes, although you have a marvelous example sitting next to me, obviously. But um, the female sex is poorly represented in the public uh, life and state institutions, although the constitution does give women the right to employment training and property ownership. Government corruption and inefficiency is certainly is not as bad as in many other African nations, but they remain a problem. The media in Somaliland are fairly open and free, but worrying abuses of press freedom have occurred in recent years. Four journalists from the independent newspaper Hatouf were detained for almost three months in 2007 on charges of allegedly spreading false information and uh, on charges of offending the president. And according to Amnesty International, some journalists in all regions of Somalia and Somaliland have faced increasing harass harassment, attack and restrictions to press freedom in recent years. Therefore, the government of Somaliland has yet to more firmly establish the respect, protection and promotion of all human rights, such as those ensuring freedom of expression, including press freedom and freedom of assembly and association. I couldn't stress more. Some events taking place in 2007 and 2008 indicated a tendency to roll back respect for human rights on national security grounds. Actions taken by government officials that have violated or threatened human rights in Somaliland have included the arbitrary arrest and detention of journalists and opposition political leaders, unfair trials, 
non-transparent and unlawful conduct of national and regional security committees and unnecessary restrictions on freedom of expression, particularly with regard to the media. Also, Somaliland's border with Puntland remains contested while, oh, oh, sorry, with several outbreaks of armed conflict resulting in human rights violations against the local populations since late 2007. While Somaliland has undeniably made demonstrable strides to protect and provide for its own population and to build human rights, there is not yet equal justice for all people within its territory. Despite these flaws, Somalilanders have demonstrated undoubtedly that they can build a peaceful, democratic state committed to upholding human rights. It is a model for Africa and the Middle East and a beacon of hope for Africa. Instead of focusing their attention only on the civil war in Somalia, it is high time that the international community gives more attention to Africa's success stories rather than its failures and therefore gives Somaliland the necessary assistance to further, development, to further develop its unique model. The international community should preserve Somaliland's achievements in terms of democracy and human rights and give them ground to flourish. The international community should provide the de facto authorities of the government of Somaliland with necessary support to promote the rights of its people and to ensure its capacity to firmly establish broad human rights protections. This should be done at all levels. With Somalia, the international community should make sure Somaliland's unique progress in human rights and democracy is not thwarted by destabilizing forces like Al-Shabaab, which destruction upon central and southern parts of Somalia. Regionally, Somaliland's neighbors could take the lead here. Guarantees to protect democracy and human rights in Somaliland should be transmitted through the African Union, which has its secretariat in neighboring Ethiopia. Ensuring peace and security in Africa and promoting democratic institutions, good governance and human rights belong to the main objectives the African Union has set to achieve. Also, on the global level, the international community should make sure Somaliland's, Somaliland remains on track for building stable and democratic governance. For all trading nations with vessels passing through the Gulf of Aden, Somaliland can be a very valuable ally in the struggle against piracy. From the European side, it would be wise to bundle and coordinate our cooperation with Somaliland in the framework of the European Union. The EU institutions could play a key role in enhancing good governance and the rule of law in the Horn of Africa with Somaliland as an important test case and bridgehead. EU programs to funnel aid and provide assistance to the people of Somaliland should be boosted in order to foster a fruitful cooperation and enhance the further development of good governance and the rule of law in Somaliland. Even a modest increase in EU aid and trade would go a long way to strengthen Somaliland's economic base. Tackling poverty and unemployment and improving health, education and housing would help underpin and enhance Somaliland's development as a beacon of hope in the region. Respect for human rights and democracy can only flourish on a healthy economic basis. Therefore, strengthening Somaliland's economic basis should be of primary concern for regional and international organizations uh, and cooperating with Somaliland. I hope to conclude, Mr. Chairman, that and I wholeheartedly wish that much progress will be made in both economic growth and human rights so that the population of Somaliland can live in a fruitful, peaceful 
and trustful environment. I thank you very much.